so one of the things that we've been talking about, of course, has been forgiveness. And that is something that we really went over quite a bit in discipleship class. And people have gotten the book since then. And they've really actually um, embraced it and have moved forward in forgiveness a lot. And so uh, last week I was um, got a text from somebody and said, uh, yeah, pastor, I guess I need that book. <laughs> so I knew what he was saying, you know, that it was, you know, the book. And um, so I said, okay, well, um, I can do that. And I said, um, and I suppose we should probably get together. Yeah, I think we should. Well, so the thing is, is that one of, one of the most amazing things that God does with us is when we give testimony to people and we tell them about something that God is doing or done, whether you're reading the book on forgiveness or you had an encounter with him or something like that happened, that when you experience it and you're so alive with it, now all of a sudden when you share it with somebody, they get excited about it and they think, oh my gosh, I think I might need that book. And that's exactly what happened. And that's what's been happening. So I ordered 10 more books. Um, but I want to, I asked David, I, t I called him, and uh, because David was given a book before um, we actually ordered books for people, um, because David, I knew, struggled with unforgiveness and anger and just from talking with him and just I could see it on his face when I would minister to him and he doesn't he's like I'm just angry I don't know I just can't get past it well you know it's not never a person it's always the revelation of the spirit of God whether he moves through a person or moves through the word of God or moves through a book and so anyways God really touched David through this book so I asked David if he would share about that um, tonight for me because I think it's, uh, it's something that we all need to hear. I think it's something that we need to talk about often because it's really easy to walk in unforgiveness. And so, David, yeah. there you go. Uh, yeah, I did get a book before everybody else because I really needed it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bring it tonight um, just because I wanted to share without looking at the book, you know, what, what God has been doing. Um, when Pastor first started talking about forgiveness, I think my eye twitched a little bit because I just didn't like it. You know, there was this, uh, it's, it's something that I just kind of hung on to in my life. Um, uh, there's something I used to say is like, I'm Italian, I don't forgive. I know it sounds funny, but that's the way I was. You know, I, I held grudges. Um, and I felt like it was to protect me somehow. That if I held that grudge and I put up that wall, that it wouldn't happen again. Um, and it's, it set up these barriers in my life that, uh, I had no idea just how difficult they would be to, well, I guess, I, I don't know, I wouldn't say difficult to bring down, how unwilling I was to bring them down, because I was comfortable, uh, I was comfortable in unforgiveness, I was comfortable boxing myself in, and, uh, just accepting the fact that I was just, probably just gonna have that little undercurrent of anger, for my whole life, you know. Um, I'm nothing like I used to be, but it's not as apparent, you know. Um, but I still, that anger is still just kind of there, you know. Um, I even noticed, like, leading up to um, really getting into the book, because I knew I was going to. I knew that I would eventually just be like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to at least try it. I found myself listening to music that I used to listen to that was, like, how I vented my anger. You know, um, because I was like, all right, it's going to keep me calm, right? <laughs> and it didn't. It didn't work. I started getting way more angry about little tiny things at work and in my personal life and uh, things I would see or things I would hear and just like, I was just like irritated, you know. Um, <clears throat> and reading the book, I realized just how um, it says in there a line that I, I, I highlighted a bunch. But one of the lines that, uh, that I highlighted, and I'm paraphrasing, it said that forgiveness is not an option. Mm. Not an option. Not an option to forgive. Um, 
by me choosing to not forgive, I was directly saying no to God, mm -hmm. openly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that one hit me hard mm -hmm. because God's changed my life so much yeah. from where I was when I came from BDR s almost seven years ago um, that I was still hanging on to that, that thing so openly. I wasn't, I wasn't quiet about the fact that I didn't like to forgive. I was very open about it. Um, and I realized just how, how against God that was when I read that line. Um, there were things that happened in my life um, that I was like, yeah, I'm, I, I'm probably not going to forgive that. Or I said I forgave it. I said the words, and I was like, okay, I'm going to say the words, and then maybe it'll happen later. You know, okay, yeah, I forgive you. You know, but what I learned in that book is that forgiveness is forgiving a debt. Um, that's what God did for all of us. He did for me. You know, when He died on the cross, He forgave the 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 debt of sin. And it's not saying when I forgive that it didn't happen. It doesn't mean that. It just means that I'm not going to allow that pain to continue to stick to me anymore. That when that situation comes around where it's that person, place, or thing, that it's not going to, it's not going to bring those emotions up anymore. And not because I've buried them so deep that I don't feel them anymore. It's because they're not there anymore. That's what forgiveness, that's what I'm learning. It's not just saying, okay, um, I'm going to fight through this every time this comes up. It's not a fight. It doesn't have to be a fight anymore when it's a true forgiveness. And it's nothing that I can do on my own. I had to be willing to say, okay, God, I, I don't want to carry this anymore. You know, I had to pray. Ray used to tell me this all the time. He'd say, I'd say, Ray, how do I pray for this situation? Because I don't want to. And he'd say, David, pray for the willingness to pray first. Pray yeah. for the willingness yeah. to pray first. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. I started off saying, God, I pray for the willingness to one day be willing to forgive. Um, and I didn't put a timetable on it, you know, but I can tell you that it happened in the last, like, four days, maybe five days. Right. Um, I woke up one morning, and, you know, the only thing I can compare it to is um, – is the day that I, I accepted Christ in my life and addiction was removed from my life in an instant. That's the only thing, that's the only comparison I have it to as far as uh, the weight lifted off, you know. Um, and it's, it's profound, it's, it's beautiful. Um, you know, forgiveness for the things that I had so much trouble forgiving for. You know, I was sitting there today and I prayed about the situation, and I remembered some other words that, that were given to me um, that I still remember is, if I can look back on these terrible things that happened, these things that made me angry, these things that tore me down, um, these things that belittled me, whatever it was, if I can look back on it and be like, okay, God, it happened, and I wouldn't change it for anything. I wouldn't change what happened because I wouldn't be who I am standing here today if it hadn't happened. Um, mm -hmm. And that's okay, because that's what God does is, you know, he, he takes what was meant for evil and he turns it for good, yeah. you know? And uh, the one thing that, uh, and I can't remember if it's in the book or not, but it, I had to say goodbye to unforgiveness. I had to mourn unforgiveness. I had to let go of it because it was, uh, it was a part, I had allowed it to be a part of who I was. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I had to be okay with understanding that forgiving somebody did not mean that I was weak in that area. Right. It didn't mean that at all. In fact, it meant that through me, through God, through me, that I was actually practicing strength. Mm -hmm. Strength that I didn't know that I could do, you know, um, It's, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird, you know. Um, but when I can actually, I know that I've forgiven because I can actually say prayers now and I mean them. 
and I mean them. Um, and it's not, it's not hollow, you know, it's, it's genuine. And um, the other thing that, that I read in the book is that um, forgiveness does not mean reconciliation. It doesn't have to. It can. It can mean reconciliation. It can mean that that forgiveness and then, the, you know, the, that thing or person, whatever comes back in your life and, you know, it's going to look different. It's not going to be the same, you know. Um, I feel like when things like that happen, it's, it's, it's not going to be the same. It's, it's going to change. You know, it's supposed to. Um, we're supposed to change, right? But forgiveness does not necessarily mean reconciliation. I don't have to, um, I don't have to go to that person and say, hey, I've forgiven you. I don't have to go to that thing and, and you know, or whatever it is, and, and just, I don't have to confront it to forgive. That's right. I can just let it go. Yeah. Because it may not be possible to confront the situation. Right. You know, there's things that happen in my life that I have no idea how I would even come close to confronting the situation. I don't know where they are or what they're doing or, or anything like that. But... I can forgive them without seeing them. I can forgive them without saying, hey, you did this to me. Because they may not even know, you know. And uh, in the 12-step in the program that I'm a part of, they talk about how, how unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Yeah. <laughs> and it's true because it was killing me. I had no idea just how much of a block it had on my life how much I was unable to step forward because every time I would step forward, it would drag me backwards, no matter what it was, no matter what the situation was, whether it was in relationships, in work, in family, in my, in my music, you know, worship and praise, whatever it is, it would drag me back because it was that thing that, like I said, I was consciously saying no to God. When I consciously say no to God, he's not going to move in my life. So how much have I missed? How much did I miss? Because for all these years, I said, I'm not going to forgive. I don't want to think about how much I missed, but I tell you what, God is a God of restoration. That's right. It doesn't matter because God is a God of restoration. It doesn't matter if it took me five minutes to figure out I'm going to forgive. It doesn't matter if it took me almost 40 years to forgive. God is a God of restoration. Yeah, so um, when I was talking to him, I'm like, yeah, I really kind of want, I would like you to share it because did you guys catch what he said? He said it was a part of him. The unforgiveness was part of his identity. So, you know, a lot of us walk around with part of your identity not being holy not being transformed, not being kingdom, because you, you just accept it as part of that's who I am, where in reality, that's not who you are at all. But, and nobody's arrived, not a person, David. So thank you for sharing that. Because when he said, that was just a part of me. But what happened through obedience and through wanting it to be out of his life and the Lord put this book in his hand, and he took the time to read it and say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go after this unforgiveness thing, this anger thing. And because of it, that's not who he is anymore. And now what takes the place of that is, is the attribute, attribute of heaven, which is forgiveness. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So talking about um, identity just a little bit, there's a couple little things I, I want to share today um, uh, with you guys. And I don't know what just happened, but there we go. Um, so <clears throat> I was watching, uh, like I told you guys, I did this challenge. This It's called the Wisdom Challenge, and I did it um, last month. And so on the 18th, a guy by the name of John Acrall was ministering about the, the 18th day of Proverbs. And while I was listening to him, I got this uh, awesome nugget and this freedom. And then um, 
I wrote it down. And then today, um, today is the 16th. And so uh, being, being in, um, trying to read wisdom, trying to read the, the, the proverb of the day, this is such an amazing proverb, and there's just things and such great things in here. And I can remember um, Proverbs 16, 3, commit your works to the Lord and all your thoughts will be established, which that saying is David, what he did is he committed himself and his thoughts to the Lord even about who he was as anger and unforgiveness. And so that gave the Lord to come in and move and establish his will in your life. And so I was thinking about that today. And then yesterday, I know I'm jumping back and forth, but I got to get to how I'm going to share this with you all today. So I don't have full revelation of it yet, but um, I've been working through something with God and I don't quite understand um, what it what it is. Um, and I've been asking him to show me what it is and... Um, so I'm getting all these revelations of different things and I don't have a complete answer, but yesterday when I was listening to, um, John, um, I was writing in my, in my book about some of the stuff that he said, because he started to talk about humbleness and, you know, God draws near to the humble and he resists the proud person. And so John was asked, my gosh, how do you stay so humble? I mean, he is a well-known speaker. He's asked to speak all over the nations. He's an author. He's an entrepreneur. You know, he's just a, a man uh, with just, he walks in this wisdom, this great wisdom. And what the gift on his life, many people want. And so they were saying, well, how do you walk in? How do you stay humble? And this was his answer. And, and I thought it was so good because I think we need to hear this. He said that the reason that he believes that he's humble is because he keeps his identity in Christ. And immediately the Lord leaped within me. And he said, you have got to keep your identity in Christ, not in your marriage not in your spouse, not in your children, not in your church, not in the call on your life, not in your money, not in your business, but in Christ. Amen. Not in the wishes that you want for your children and they consume you because that's all you can think about. It can't be in anything but Christ. And because his identity is in Christ, he's able to stay in a place of humility and immediately I thought about how the Lord resists the prideful and without realizing it how we can be in pride by our identity David is Italian Italian Italians don't forgive so see his identity was being Italian and not forgiving. So that stronghold in his mind, because a stronghold is a mind hold in your mind, it's a very strong thought that you don't want to let go of because it is life to you, it is who you are, it's what you believe, and it's very strong in your life, and you don't want to let go of it. Regardless of what the Bible says, regardless about anything. And so what has to happen is the Lord has to come in and deliver us from such things. And so the identity of David was he's Italian. And they don't forgive. He was brought up that way. So that stronghold was strong. So for a young man, just now being able to step into his identity as a person that forgives and releases grace. Because that's who he really is in Christ. Another piece of the man that was in the rock is gone as he's coming out. So feel like we need to examine that in our own hearts. So listen, you guys, everybody's been posting all this stuff about Asbury, right? With a whole bunch of stuff. And I was going through that, going through that, going through that. I was getting mad. I was getting mad because I thought, well, you're all posting this, but I don't see you coming up to the altar. I don't see you doing what some of these kids were doing. 
And on Sunday when Pat came up while Tammy was preaching, because Pat's being transformed and he's on fire right now, and he sat in the back over there and he said to Cheryl, I feel like I'm supposed to go up there. I feel like I'm supposed to go up there. Can I, should I go? I don't know what to do. And she goes, I don't know. I think what I did. God's telling you to go, you should go. So Pat came up because the altar is always open, and then Pat finished, and then Pat went and sat down. Tammy goes, I didn't even see him sit down. I did because I watched later, and I seen that this had happened. So I started searching my heart. I started saying, God, what's wrong? Why am I mad? Not at the move of God, but why am I mad? And he reminded me what happened while BDR was here because BDR was a move of God. And the people that came in during that time had to get over their flesh and religion in a big hurry because we were such a messy people. But the thing that happened is nobody stayed away from the move of God. When God said, get up and go, those kids would get up and come. When at the end of the service, when there was a call and they were even slightly moved, they came up. That's what I did at Living Waters. You couldn't keep me in my seat. I was constantly going to the cross. I was constantly going to prayer. I was constantly running after God, and I kept kneeling. If he said, kneel, I kneeled. If he said, you know, do what I go over there and talk to that person I did it I didn't even know what I'm doing but that's what God does but I'm like God why why is everybody want this but nobody wants to get up and I'm just going to put this out there so here we are getting a word from the Lord and I was talking to Tammy about this and I can use her as an example because she did it and I said I'm sure that people are getting tweaked by God while the service is going on and they say well I'll just go up afterwards I'm not going to go up in front of everybody. And then they don't go up. Now, that's not what Tammy, that's not her part, but she, ends, but she goes, yeah, I've done that before. I said, how many other people do that? Because we just get comfortable, and we don't want people to know that maybe that, that's about us. And what if it's really not about you, but God's asking you to move anyways? Because maybe you're the move. So when I was at a family camp, and I was in my 30s, Actually, I was in my 20s yet, like 29 years old, and this was one of my times uh, working in a ministry, running after the Lord, and we went away to a family camp, and you guys have heard this story, but in this family camp, all the women were over here, the guys were over there, the kids were over there, and then there was times we were all together. Well, I had just learned how to be submissive to my husband, and uh, learned, hello, learned, remember that word, okay? But um, because I was pretty strong and feisty, and so was he, and we went to high school together, and we were young and dumb and all that stuff. So um, anyways, that push-pull when you're really young, and um, finally, after going to church for a while, and I actually was in a legalistic church, actually, which ended up hurting me in the long run, but it also there was some deliverance that I got while I was there. And so... What happened to me is we were at this camp, and the camp was amazing. It was all kinds of people from different churches. And the lady up there was preaching about submissive hearts, being submissive, being submit, submitted unto leaders, being submitted unto your husband, being submitted unto all these people. And I'm standing there in the back, like I'm on the second row from the back. I wasn't one of them front row people at places like that. I was always in the back. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God, that I have gotten past this. Whew, this isn't for me. Yay. Because, you know, I was used to always getting hit and having to repent and, you know, getting turned around by God. So I'm standing in the back, and so they tell you, they say, okay, now, if you've got, if the Lord has, has really tugged on your heart, um, then I want you just to kneel right where you're at. And just take care of it right now with God. And I'm standing there with my hands on the back of the chair. And the Lord says, that would be you. <laughs> and I said, but God, I'm dressing like he wants me to dress. I'm wearing my hair like he wants me to wear my hair. I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do. I'm doing the stuff. I'm doing the work, right? And um, I'm submitting. And he says, then why are you arguing with me? <laughs> so I still stood there just strong, not budging, convicted by God, the squeeze is on, the song is playing. I know there's only a couple of lines left, and all of a sudden, the last two songs, 
last two words of the song, I finally kneeled. I'm down on the ground. I'm down like this, and I'm on the chair, and I'm like, God, can I get up now? Can I get up now? All these people are going to think that I'm just not submissive, and I am. And all these people, they just know, and they're all looking at me. Can I get up now? And I couldn't get up. I had to stay down like this until the Lord told me that I could get up. And finally, when I stood up, I was so embarrassed. I bet, yeah, I was three sheets red, and I still was prideful. And I'm like, I just did that because God told me to. That's not my problem. But that was the beginning of my deliverance. Not to be submissive to my husband, but for my heart to be changed. To walk submissive to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But many people went down that day, and God did such a work. And so I believe it was Liz posted something from this, this revival, and it was actually a news clip, how it started. You guys know how it started? It started because a young man at the end of the service stood up and started telling everybody his junk. He started repenting for how he was living. And these are all young people who are living like him for the most part. So this young man stands up and he starts telling because he was so convicted by the Holy Spirit, the stuff that he was doing that was not glorifying the Lord. And he was convicted and the Lord came upon him and he started repenting and it just started to move in the whole room. And I thought, God, how many of us don't move when you are telling us to move? How many of us say, no, I'll do it later and never take care of it? How many of us will not be that move to start that move? I don't know about you, but I've stopped it. I've not moved when God has told me to move. That's a perfect example. I finally did it. But delayed obedience is disobedience, and I still was prideful. Something that I learned today, which I thought was really good, which I thought was a great thing to share um, from, um, from this Proverbs today, when it talks about, you know, we talk about faith and how it's an attribute of the kingdom of heaven, and it's impossible to please God without faith. And many of us are mad at God without realizing it. Many of us have hardened our hearts toward the Lord. And I remember talking to Pastor Rick down in Florida a while ago, and something happened to him. Somebody um, mis didn't do something, you know, quite right toward him. And, um, and without realizing it, he was starting to get a hard heart, and his wife realized it. And she said, now, Pastor, or she goes, honey, don't you get a hard heart toward them precious people because they love you and you love them. And all of a sudden it brought him around because so quickly we can have a hard heart which stops us from moving for God. Well, something today I learned and I thought, oh, my gosh, this happened to me. This happened to me. This happened to me and Dan, but it happened to me internally because I was so 100% positive what God was going to do when Dan and I were going to court with a person. I thought for sure I knew exactly I had a word in the Bible. I had a word. I just knew it. And what I learned today was that when we allow faith to operate, we follow God. We don't know the outcome. Faith is faith. Faith is not seen. So sometimes when we perceive or there's a presumption what your faith is going to look like at the end of that journey, of that trial, of that tribulation, that presumption, presumption is pride and arrogance. But what's happened is what we do is all of a sudden we think that it's faith. But all of a sudden, faith gets misapplied, and it becomes pride. And then that pride, all of a sudden, you don't realize it because it's so sneaky. And you're, you're operating in presumption, and presumption is pride and arrogance. 
And that is about assuming that we know how God is going to bring something to pass. And we're certain what's going to happen. And the Lord reminded me today that pride comes before the fall. And that was in Proverbs 16 today. And I thought, oh my gosh, Lord, because I, what I said, what I thought is that I went through a time of my, my faith being tested. It was. Because my faith still had my presumption in it. It had what I figured was going to happen and without realizing that I held God accountable to me because it didn't turn out the way. So who became God of the King of Kings in my own mind, in my own heart? Who hardened my heart toward my Lord? Presumption. Misguided faith. Faith is a substance of things that we don't see. So when we automatically know what's going to happen, we start getting in danger. So we have to step back. So faith is stepping out when the Lord tells you to in a grocery store, in a church, and be the move of God. Faith is not worrying about what other people are going to think about you, but maybe you're going to be like the young man that God used to start this move down there. One of my friends is down there right now from Grand Rapids. And the thing is, is I'm like, Lord, forgive me for being angry. Because I was angry. And my anger is not of God. It's of flesh. Because part of my identity that I have is not in Christ. Like David. Part of David's identity was unforgiveness because he was an Italian. Part of my identity is the call on my life. And when I see stuff like this, sometimes I take it personal, like, what am I doing wrong? So I had to repent for that. Because my identity is a daughter. Yes, there's a call on my life, but I don't got to worry about that call. I just have to worry about being a daughter. And my identity in Christ is way bigger than I am. But it's the attributes of heaven. My identity in Christ is the attributes of heaven and nothing else. My identity in Christ and your identity in Christ is the fruits of the Spirit and nothing else. And if we go after deliverance and signs, miracles, and wonders, and we're not getting them, it's probably because we're not mature enough to handle them yet. Because all of a sudden, instead of going after the presence, you're going after the presence, that the manifestation of the presence, and you're, you're, you're going to get caught up in the fact that God is using you. And now your identity becomes your gifts. And your calling instead of your position as a son and a daughter that forgives, that loves, that walks in faith, that says, yes, God, I'll step out. Yes, God, I'll kneel. Even if, even if I'm not sinning, if you tell me to kneel and everybody thinks I'm sinning, I'm going to kneel for you because maybe the person next to me needs to kneel. Or maybe the person that's, that's watching across the room needed somebody first to do it and we all think as christians that we're all seasoned and we're all this and we are not all that at all the first shall be last and the last shall be first and i just see god saying i'm coming to clean the house in my house first and there are some prideful presumptuous people that have hardened their heart because things didn't turn out the way that they thought they would. And I'm one of them. But I don't want to be. So when God gives us revelation and he shows us that he has come to take our hard hearts and he's come to set us free from anger, 
It's time to let it go. So for me, when the Lord showed me yesterday through John Occur that humbleness is his identity. Why he was humble is because he kept his identity in Christ. I said, oh, God, forgive me. Forgive me. Because we all think we're humble. Oh, we're humble. You can minister all day long, but are you? Am I? I want him to draw near to me. And I want to be like I was at Living Waters, sitting in the second row, because I wasn't worthy enough to sit in the front row, but I knew that I was going to get as close as I could get to that row to make sure that I had room to get on my knees right there. It didn't matter who was in the room. And if he said, give your coat away, I gave my coat away. If he said, lift up your hands, which I was not comfortable with, I lifted up my hands a little bit, just a little bit. I put them down. Then pretty soon they'd get a little higher because you know what? His glory started to fill my life. And presumption can harden our hearts. Presumption can make you prideful because presumption is pride. Yeah, we still serve them. Yeah, we go to church. We tithe. We do everything we're supposed to do. We're in the works. We're <laughs> trying. But when God will give you a revelation of something, that's the time to grab a hold of it. I'm not out of the woods by any means. I don't even understand all this yet, but I'm sharing it with you because it's very raw, and God tends to serve things through me that are really raw because then I don't get to tame them up. I just have to be humble and share what he's doing. So right now, I am boiling mad. I'm not mad at anybody. I'm just mad. And I was talking to Tammy, and I said, you know, I know this has got to happen in my life, like David, because something is causing that anger to boil. Because before, I could just, oh, whatever, you know, I just flip through it fast, you know. I wouldn't get in judgment. I wouldn't be critical. But all of a sudden, all that stuff is coming at me, and that is not God. So I know, Houston, we have a problem. So I'm going after it. God, what is it? I want to know what it is. What is it? It's not because I have too much on my plate. It's not because of this or because of that. It's something within and if it doesn't come up, if, if I can't control it, like we all do, I don't want to control it. Even if I have to say I'm sorry six times a day. Even if I have to go to God and say, man, I did it again. Lord, I'm going to get there one of these times. Because the Lord knows my heart. See, we all think we know that, that the plans that we have, but the Lord is the one that's directing my steps. He's the one that's letting this boil to the top. It's got to. That's the only way the drops goes away. And then I shine a little better. If it ain't long, and boiling starts again. But I don't always tell you about it. But I'm telling you about it. Not because I need you to pray for me, but pray for me anyways, please. I'm telling you because it's sin. And that's what made that young man start that move of God. He wasn't trying to be anything but honest. Because he just was in a reverence place of God and said, Oh my gosh, I see me how I am. And that's where we need to be. We don't have a college community. We can't be who they are, nor do we want to be. But we want our hearts to be there. And that only happens on our knees. It only happens through repentance. And then he raises you up, and then we got more stuff to deal with. But my gosh, it's okay. Because his love never fails. And it never gives up on us. And I thank him and I ask for help. 
I, I, I ask for help when I'm in places, conditions like this, because this isn't the first time I've been in a, com a condition like this, but it says to commit your work to the Lord, you know, and your thoughts will be established. But what it's saying there is saying commit what you have planned for today and let the Lord's thoughts lead you. So if I have committed myself to the Lord this day and the plans that I have, the first plan I want to have is with him. And I want his thoughts to be my thoughts and I want him to tear me up because I was a whole lot happier getting on my knees quickly, going and doing what he said, giving away what I had, and I had very little. But the peace that passes my own understanding and the joy of the Lord that fills my heart, and I don't walk in presumption, I walk by faith, because it is impossible to please God. And our faith now is controlled by our minds and our vain imaginations and we go into presumption and all of a sudden that's pride and arrogance and we're assuming that we know what God is going to do. And then when God does do something and you might have had a premonition, we take glory for, oh, I prayed for that. I, I seen that. I said that you don't know it. I did it. I did it. I, 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 I. You were the chosen vessel to, to do that. But it's still the I am in us that is doing it. So I believe God wants to empower every person, every one of us, to a greater degree. But I also believe that we have to repent for what we know when he brings it, just quickly. It doesn't mean you have to get out. I spend a lot of hours down in my room lately for the past few months. I am digging deep. And it's not fun, you guys. It's not fun. But I'm telling you, I, I'm so glad that he showed me the presumption today because that's exactly where I've been in the past, which hardened my heart, which now I know that it's a heart problem. And so now I know that I can give it away. And one other thing I want to tell you, and this is confession as well, is... I couldn't understand why I was so angry almost two weeks ago, a week and a half. I mean, I was hot to try. It was, I don't understand how this anger is so like a f infernal in me right now, but it's got to come. So I want it to come. Lord, let it come. But in it, I'm saying, what is happening? Why am I like this? What happened to me? And you guys don't know my past. You, you know bits and pieces of my past, but you don't know the severity of the trauma in my life. And, and I don't need, I don't, but what I do know is I'm learning about trauma, and this trauma uh, could be the key to the anger, and so I'm ready. I, whatever you want, God, I, I just want it to go. But I don't want it to go prematurely. I really want it to go so like you, David, it's gone once and for all, so you can breathe again. So when you think about it, you don't roll your eyes, or you're, somebody doesn't hurt you, or when you see something, you don't have to go pass through it or make a snidey remark about something, you know, on Facebook. I, I just want to be be free and um so I couldn't understand I I didn't even realize I was doing it and I told you guys this um last Thursday that um when I went to TikTok and the Lord showed me about love and I'm all about love I got delivered from the song power of your love but I willingly withheld love from somebody on purpose like I ain't you ain't getting nothing from me anymore. And I didn't realize that I had done that until God showed me through that TikTok video. And it broke me. And I cried. Because my heart is the love of God. And anger and presumption and hard hearts and not being obedient when he says move. I get up here. I move. I want to release it. I want to give it. But I held it back for the first time in my Christian walk since 2003. And I'm like, oh my gosh. 
I'm not too good. <laughs> I'm really bad. And then I had to come out of that right away because that's victim mentality and being stupid about yourself. I'm sorry. I just needed to repent and make it right. That person didn't need to know that I was withholding love from them on person. You don't go tell somebody that you held unforgiveness for them forever. You just you that's that's you and a God thing. You just get it right and you let him live. So I want to challenge you to read Proverbs 16 today because there's so many amazing things in here and the Lord has really uh, blessed my heart today reading it and you know when when we commit our ways to the Lord he's going to establish our ways you know a man's heart a man's a man's heart plans his ways his heart which can be deceitful above all things but the Lord establishes his steps so David he established your steps to that book he's establishing my steps to the places where I'm actually seeing that I need deliverance and I, I don't need deliverance like I'm not demon possessed that's not it I need deliverance from my own strongholds and my own mind and mindsets and I can do that through surrender to God so that's what I mean about deliverance and that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit go, is before a fall. And that is in today's Proverbs. Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the soil with the proud. So we don't even realize Understanding is a wellspring of life to him who has it. But the correction of fools is folly. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb. Sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end is the way of death. So some of the things that we think might seem right to us, we might want to just visit, revisit God with them. So when we commit our ways to him earlier in the verse, when we, when we do that, let him establish and be led by faith, we're going to get there. But faith is not presumption. And that's a lot of times, not just me, I know it. I know the times, I got Pacific times in my life where I can see it, and then I said my faith was tested. Oh, it was, but it wasn't because I understood it. It was because, because I thought I was operating in faith when I was truly operating in presumption, and God didn't do what I thought he should do, and that I was so sure. And how did I get it wrong? I, I don't know how to explain it other than that I stepped out of faith, trusting God and being led by faith, letting him, him open doors and close doors. And even though it was hurting my heart and confusing me at times because I couldn't grasp it, I could still walk in faith, trusting that in the end, he was working everything out for good according to his purpose in our lives and to transform for us into his image and what the devil wants us to do is operate in presumption so our hearts get hard and instead of being transformed into the image of God through the goodness of him making sure that these things didn't happen that we expected to happen because he only knew the outcome of them so faith is a heaven kingdom of heaven attribute that we all have but we have to understand faith is something that we have and we follow and it's christ it's jesus it's not presumption it's not our vain imaginations and we all go there but today today i got to repent and didn't even realize that i had a hard heart towards some of the circumstances in my life <laughs> so so good so good so he's removing the dross and maybe my hard heart maybe my anger is coming from me hardening my heart through these situations which caused me to be angry you know and it's just deep and i've been able to control it where you know and i don't mean like dan and me fighting and him that's not it that, that's different that's like one nerve left and he got on it or i got on his this is deep this is this is more than that and so but God is going to take it as soon as he reveals it completely. And if I have a whole bunch of more presumptions that I need to be taking care of in my life, I'm here, Lord. So anyways, let's pray. God, I just really thank you that you don't ever let go. 
through the calm and through the storm, you never let go. In every high and every low, you never get let go. Lord, you never let go. We can see the light coming for the heart that holds on, and we are holding on to you. And Lord, I pray that you take this word out by the spirit of the living God and that each person hears it. I pray, God, that we hear it in our own language and that, Father God, you tumble us and turn us and turn the soil so that the word, the seed, goes in and it produces a good fruit. That, Lord, repentance comes and that, Lord, we start to be more aware of when you're calling us to move and that we move when you tell us to move, Lord, That rather than waiting when we're we're comfortable and we feel it's safe. God, that we are safe in you, that you are the great I am, the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. And Lord, we just love you and praise you in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. amen. amen.